the world's great novel. The National Broadcasting Company presents the first of three episodes in its dramatization of Stephen's great story of David Balfour, Kidnapped, another of its series of books that live the world's great novel. The story of my adventure really begins with a certain morning early in June, the year of grace, 1751, two days after I'd taken the key for the last time out of the door of my father's house. I was 17 and alone in the world. Father's letter in my pocket was all the fortune he'd left me. And as I breasted a hill and came out on the Edinburgh Road, I knew I was nearing the great mansion to which it was addressed, the House of Shores. Father had written on the outside. To the hands of Ebenezer Balpour, Esquire of Shaws, in his house of Shaws, these will be delivered by my son, David Balpour. Ebenezer's name was new to me, and yet it sounded like a great name, and Balfour was our name. We'd always been poor country folk, and now the pride of life filled my brain at the thought of the fine future before me. Good day to you. Do you know the House of Shaws? Aye. What for? It's a great house. Uh, doubtless. It is a big house. Aye. And the folks that are in it. Folk? Are you daft? There is no folk there to call folk. What? Not Mr. Ebenezer? Oh, aye. There's the laird, if it's him you're wanting. What'll be your business money? Oh, uh, I was led to think I'd get a situation. What? Real money. It's none of my affairs. But if you'll take a word from me, you'll keep clear of the shaws. I cannot describe the blow this man dealt to my illusions. I made other inquiries. They all met with accusations against the laird of shaws. Indistinct ones, to be sure but leaving the wider field to my fancy. The toilet was deepened as I put my usual question to a sour-looking woman. She pointed a bony finger down the hill to what looked like a bulky ruin standing very bare on a green. That is the house of Shaws. Blood built it. Blood stopped the building of it. Blood shall bring it doom. See here. I spit upon the ground. Black be it all. If ye see the lair, tell him. This makes the 1219 time General Clouston has called down the curse on him and his house. Buyer and stable. Man, guest and master. Wife, miss, or bear. Black. Black. Be the fall! Mr. Balfour? Mr. Balfour? Mr. Balfour! This blunder bush is loaded. I've come with a letter for Mr. Ebenezer Balfour of Shaws. We'll put it on the doorstep and offer you. I'll do no such thing. It's a letter of introduction to your master. Who are you? I'm not ashamed of my name. They call me David Balfour. Balfour? Is your father dead? Aye, he'll be dead. We'll I'll let you in. Ah, go into the kitchen and mind you, touch nothing. Uh, let's see the letter. The letter is for Mr. Ebenezer Balfour, not for you. Oh, and who do you think I am? Give me Alexander's letter, Davy, my man. For little as you seem to like either me or my house, 
I'm your born uncle. You? My uncle? Aye. Eh, uh, you can go see in this letter. As you see, the seal was not broken. Aye. Your father's been lying dead? Three weeks, sir. Uh, he was a secret man, was Alexander. He never said much for book me. I never knew till you told me yourself that he had any brother. Oh, dear me, dear me. Nor yet of Shaw's, I dare say. Not so much as the name, sir. Ha, ha. I'm just as glad I let you in. We'll agree fine yet. And who, come away to your bed. Very well, Uncle. But, uh, may I, may I not have a light, Uncle? I cannot see a thing. Hoo, 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 hoo. Lights in a house I did not agree with. I'm feared of fires. You'll find your bed straight before your nose, and you'll sleep very well. You're a bro, lad. Aye, <laughs> you'll sleep very well. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Most of the next day, my uncle spent smoking thoughtfully, occasionally questioning me. And you'll have some friends, Nedu? Many friends. Hmm. And who will they be? Different gentlemen of the Campbell clan. Davy, my man, you've come to the right place. I mean to do right by you. But while I'm thinking what's the best career to find for you, I wouldn't like the Balfours to be humble before any Elan Campbell. And I'll ask you to keep your tongue within your teeth. What do you mean? No letters, no messages, no kind of word to anybody or else. There's my door. Uncle Ebenezer, it was by no will of mine that I came seeking you. And if you show me your door again, I'll take you at your word. I cannot find a fortune for you at the bottom of a parish bowl. But just give me a day or two and say not a word to anybody. And as sure as sure, I'll do the right by you. Very well. I'll stay. Ah, we'll agree fine yet. Do you know a woman called Janet Clouston? Janet Clouston? She gave me a message for you. I'm to say she's cursed this house 1,219 times. Oh, don't, Davy. I'll have her roasted on red peat before I'm through here. 1,219. Aye, that's ever a day since I had her sold up. You sold her up? A witch. I a proclaimed witch. I'm off and see the session clerk. I'll have her arrested, I tell you. I... I... Ah. Oh, but I cannot leave you by yourself in the house. I'll have to lock you out. If you lock me out, it'll be the last you see of me in friendship. This is no way to win my favor, David. Sir, I was brought up to have a good conceit of myself. If you were all the family I had in the world ten times over, I wouldn't have buy your liking at such price. Uh, well, well, I'll not go. That's all that's to be said about it. Throughout the day, there was hardly a minute that did not feel my uncle's gaze on me. But there was no explanation that I could see. One strange thing I found. An inscription in my father's hand on the flyleaf of a book. To my brother Ebenezer on his fifth birthday. No, this was odd. Ebenezer had inherited Shaw's. So he must have been the eldest brother. But this inscription seems to mean that my father could write before he was five years old. I tried to get this notion out of my head, but it stuck to me. Finally, that night, I asked my uncle if father had not been very quick at his books. Alexander? Ah, oh, not him. I was far quicker than myself. I was a clever chappy when I was young. But could he not uh, read rather early? Read? Why, well, I could read as soon as he could. Oh, then... Uh, were you and my father twins? Twins? Eh, uh, what makes you ask that? Come on, tell me, what makes you ask that? Uh, what do you mean? I'm taking yeah, my land from my jacket. Yeah. That's no way to behave. Oh, oh. 
God, man, Davy. You should not speak to me about your father. That's where the mistake is. He was all the brother I ever had. I... Uh, Davy, I've been thinking. There's a wee bit of money that I have promised you before you were born. Promised it to your father. Oh, less than legal, you understand. But I keep it that bit of money separate. It was a great expense, but a promise is a promise. And it has grown by now to be a matter of just precisely, just exactly, just exactly 40 pounds. 40 pounds? I, by the pity, and I'll get it, yes. I got it out this morning and I put it in a wee bag for safekeeping. Oh, I, I don't know what to say. Ah, there. That'll show you. I'm a queer man, Davy, and strange with strangers. But my word is my bond, and there's the proof of it. Uncle, this is most general. Fancy here, no. Tit for tat. Why, of course, I'm ready to prove my gratitude in any responsible degree. I'm growing old and a little broken, Davy, my man. And I'll expect you to help me with the hoose and the bit of garden. I'm ready to do so to the best of my ability. Well, let's begin. There's the key of the tower at the far end of the hoose. You can only get into it from the inside, for that part of the hoose is no finish. Gang you in there and up the stairs and bring me down the chest that's at the top. There's papers in it. Can I have a light, sir? No, 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 no. Light's in my hoose, Davy, my lad. Light brings fire, and fire brings destruction. Very well, sir. Uh, are the stairs good? Ah, they're grand. They keep to the wall, there's no banisters. But the stairs are grand underfoot. All right, Uncle. Tried to murder me. The stairs are grand. Forty foot drop in the dark. Uncle. Davy. <laughs> so the stairs were grand, were they? So light brings fire and fire destruction. Oh, my heart. The wee blue bottle, Davy, my lad. Get the blue bottle there on the shelf. Huh. Uh, Here. Uh, 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 that's a bit better. No, sit up. Uh, no, sit. Uh, and start telling me why you've lied to me at every word. Why are you afeard that I should leave you? Why do you dislike it to be hinted that you and my father were twins? Uh, why have you given me money to which I've no claim? Uh, and last of all, why have you tried to kill me? Answer me. I'll, I'll tell you in the morning. I'm too weak now, Davy. Weak? Uh, Very well. Come to your room. Come on. Uh, uh, I'm going to lock you in. Next morning, before I unlocked my prisoner's door, I replenished the fire and sat down to consider my position. There was no doubt I carried my life in my hand. But, like most lads country bred, I had a great opinion of my own shrewdness. I saw myself smelling out all my uncle's secrets and growing to be his master. But in all the pictures my fancy painted in the burning coals, there was no sign of a ship of a big bludgeon for my silly head, or the least hint of all the troubles that were to fall on me. When I freed my uncle, he greeted me civilly enough, and we sat down to breakfast. 
Well, sir, since you seem to have nothing to say to me, it's time, I think, to understand each other. You took me for a country Johnny Rowe. I took you for a good man. It seems we were both wrong. What cause you have to fear me, cheat me, and attempt my life? Uh, uh just leave me, my lad. A bit of fun. Fun? I'll, 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 I'll make all clear to you when we've had breakfast. Aye, uncle, and... Uh, stay where you are. What you, Mike? Please name your pleasure. Oh, pleasure. If you have no business... <laughs> oh, sorry, brother. Don't lock me out. You want to get me thrashed? I brought a letter from Old Easy Alsi to Mr. Bellflower. We'll come into my house. Here, Uncle. Ah. Mm. 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 Read that. As you see, I hit a venture with this man, Elias Hoseason, the captain of the Tradenbury Covenant. No, if you and me, Davy, were to walk over with the uncabin boy, I could see the captain, and we could jog on to the lawyer he mentioned there, Mr. Rankler. You'd be unwilling to believe my naked word. But you'll believe Rankler, he's agent to half the gentry in these parts. He knew your father. My father, you see? Aye. Hmm. Very well. Come, Uncle. We'll all three go down to the Queen's bed. Uncle, you walk ahead. What? Davy, I... I... Ahead, please, where I can see ye. I will. Lord, mummy. You start to give orders like Easy Alcy himself. He minds for nothing and no one in heaven or earth. He'll crack on all soil into the day of judgment, he will. Yes, the skipper's a manly man. It's kill you as soon as look at you. Only he ain't no seaman. Yes, it, it's Mr. Shaw navigates the brig. He's the finest seaman in the tribe. Only for drink. Well, look at this wound on my leg. Yeah, look. What? Do you take such savage usage at his hands? You're no slave to be so handled. No. And so he'll find. See this knife? Let me see him try. Oh, I'll do for him. No, he won't be the first all I've done for. In heaven's name... Can you find no reputable life on shore? Yeah, there's worse off than me. There's the 20 pounders. You should see them taken on as soon as we've cleared the river and they have their drug out of their heads. 20 pounders? Then we takes to the Carolinas. Oh, you mean the criminals sent to be sold as slaves in North America? Yes, well, criminals. And them what are just trepanned because someone wants them out of the way. Trepanned? Yes, trepanned. Kidnapped. Real, Davy, my man. Here is the tavern where the captain awaits me. And yonder ship is the covenant. If I'm not mistaken, they're busking her for sea. Aye, there's men aloft are making the sails ready. And she's taking on stores, too. So come along, Davy, my lad. We got to meet Captain Hoseas. Come in. Mr. Balfour. Aye. <laughs> Proud to see you, sir, and glad that you're here on time. Glad to see you, Hazelson. Thank you, sir. Uh, Davy, my lad, will you, will you just run outside and play yourself a while, eh, my lad? Now, I'd never seen the sea and was anxious for a nearer look. So away I went, leaving the two men sitting down to bottles and a graced mass of papers. As I passed through the tap room, I asked the innkeeper if he knew Mr. Rankeller, the lawyer. Rankeller? Who's I? A very honest man. Uh, by the by, was it you that came in with Ebenezer? Aye. You'll be no kin of his? Why, uh, no, none. Of course not. I thought not. Yet you have a kind of look like his brother Alexander. Uh, it seems that Ebenezer is ill seen in this country. <laughs> no doubt. He's a wicked old man, and there's many would like to see him squirming in a rope. Uh, Janet Clouston and many more that he's harried out of horse and haim. Uh, yet he was once a fine young fellow too, but that was before the report went abroad. Oh, years ago, no, 
when Mr. Alexander disappeared. That was like the death of him. What report was that? Oh, just that he'd killed him. Did you never hear that? And what would they kill him for? Oh, what for? But just to get the place. The place? The shores? Near the place that I can. Was my... Uh, was Alexander the eldest son then? Dead was he. What else would he have killed him for? No, my father, as I well knew, had been alive only three weeks ago. So the rumor against Ebenezer could not have been true. But knowing now that I, and not my uncle, was the true heir, that I, not he, was the real owner of the House of Shores in its broad lands, I walked out of the inn, half stunned with my good fortune. A thousand pleasant things were crowding my mind as I walked by the shore. I was examining a piece of seaweed when I heard my uncle call me. As I approached, Captain Hoseason walked towards me. Who is sir? Master Butterfer tells me great things to you. And for my own part, I like your looks. <laughs> Tell you what, lad. You shall come on board my brig for half an hour till the ebb sets and break a ball with me. Oh, unfortunately, sir, my uncle and I have an appointment with a lawyer. Hey, aye, aye, he passed me the word of that. But you see, the boat will set you ashore at the Toon Pier, and that's but the penny stone cast from Rankelor's horse. Whist! Keep an eye on the old toad. He means mischief. Huh? Aye, come aboard till I can get a word with you. Come, lad. What can I bring you from the Carolinas? Only friend of Master Balfour's can command. Yeah. Ooh. Well, lad, you'll get your sea legs soon, and your uncle will come on board directly. Come, I'll take you forward and show you our figurehead. Can you now see to the top of this main, Master Vose? It was the main yard there that hoisted your board. The two of them do a grand job for us when the winds fail. Now, uh, here is... Captain, where's my uncle? Aye. That's the point. What? <gasps> help! Help! Uncle! Anybody! Help! I'm kidnapped! Help! Help! I... Arms bound. Where? I remember. Kidnapped. My own uncle cursing. Must be blown gale. Sour smell. Pain. So dark. Well, boy, have you hardly meat? Couldn't. No. Let me dress your wound again. No, Captain. A high fever. No appetite, no light, no meat. You see for yourself what that means. I am no conjurer, Mr. Ryak. I want that boy taken out of this hole and put in the forecastle. What you want, sir, is a matter of concern to nobody but yourself. But I can tell you that which is to be. Here he is, here he shall stay. Admitting that you've been paid in a proportion, Captain, I will crave leave humbly to say that I have not... Indeed I am, and none too much, to be the second officer of this old tub. But I was paid for nothing more. If you could hold back your hand from the tin pannikin, mm -hmm. I would have no complaint to make of you. Aye. And instead of asking riddles, I make bold to say that you should keep your breath to cool your porridge. We'll be required on deck. Hold. Admitting that you've been paid to do a murder. What's that? What kind of talk is that, Mr. Ryak? Seems it is the talk you can understand. Mr. Ryak, I've sailed with you three cruises. In all that time, sir, you should have learned to know me. I'm a stiff man and a doer man. 
But what you say the new fight, fight? It comes from a bad heart and a black conscience. If you say the lad will die... Aye, he will, but... Well, then, take him where you please. <laughs> well, well, well. The old man gave in to me for once. Steady now while I cut your bonds. That's better. Steady again while I lift you. You'll be a sight more comfortable in the forecastle. I lost my senses again, but I opened my eyes on blessed daylight and saw men sitting round the forecastle on their berths. Here I lay for many days. I saw much of the cabin boy, he who'd really got me into all this. He gave me a cruel reminder of his tales of the twenty pounders by revealing that I was to be sold into slavery by order of my wicked uncle. Daily he brought me news from the roundhouse where he slept and served. Sometimes he nursed a wound or bruise in silent agony. Sometimes he raved against the brutality of the chief mate, Mr. Schoen. I'd never seen this terrifying man, but one day in the forecastle. Schoen's done for him at last. Who? The cabin boy, of course. Ah, no, it's come to this. Tis murder the sot. I wish the captain die. Davy, my man. We want you to serve in the roundhouse. You have to take the cabin boy's place. Run away after you. Oh. Oh, the carrion. The cabin boy? Run away after, lad. Run away after you. Oh, no. No. He's dead. Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson is one of the world's great novels brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Listen next week to the second episode of Kidnapped. And don't forget that your local public library can be a source of great pleasure and benefit. To add to your enjoyment of this series, we recommend the handbook of the world's great novels, which you may obtain by sending 25 cents to world's great novels Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. That's Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27. Kidnapped was adapted for radio by Clement Fuller. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom, and the orchestra was directed by Bernard Berquist. The entire production was under the direction of Homer Heck. Bill Fine was featured as David Balfour. Uncle Ebenezer was played by Sherman Marks. Captain Hoseason by Just Pugh. Ryak by Marvin Peisner. The Innkeeper by Arthur Peterson. The Cabin Boy by Cornelius Peebles. Janet Clouston by Hilda Graham. And The Carter by Howard Hall. This is John Conrad. This program came to you from Chicago and is a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations. Millions of Europe's children are homeless and hungry. Many are starving. Their daily diets are inadequate to sustain life. American dollars can save their lives. Join the Crusade for Children. Twenty-five well-established private relief agencies have combined their efforts in a single drive to raise $60 million. Send your contribution now to Crusade for Children. New York, New York. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.